The troubles all began three years ago with the passing of the old king, Lord Ironfist. The king left two sons. Roland was good, kindly, and honorable, while Archibald was not so good. Traditionally, the choice of the heir falls to the royal seer, but he died in a tragic boating accident. His successor's luck was no better, with Frederick falling out of a window, Robert slain by a dragon, and Johann dying of food poisoning. Archibald accused Roland of murdering the Sears, and issued a proclamation against Roland. Fearing for his life, Roland fled the place for his castle in the west. With Roland gone, Archibald was able to influence the new royal seer's decision. The seer chose Archibald, and Archibald crowned himself king the next day. And so the war for succession began. Choose your lord. Well, although I want to show you both of the campaigns, I'll start with Roland's one, for old time's sake. My faithful vassal, I greet your pledge of loyalty with gratitude and relief. As you know, my wicked brother Archibald has seized my father's castle and usurped the throne. Only the lords nearest the castle have been quick to swear allegiance to him, but I fear even distant lords may take the oath in the absence of a viable alternative. I am determined to provide that alternative, even if it means making war on vassals formerly loyal to my father. Therefore, it is with a heavy heart that I must order you to compel the loyalty of the barons nearest my summer palace by force of arms. Since we cannot afford to fail, I have provided you with a sum of gold sufficient to the task. I have also provided you with a magical amulet to help coordinate our war efforts. Wear it always, and we will be in constant communication. Scenario 1. False of Arms Roland needs you to defeat the lords near his castle to begin his war of rebellion against his brother. They are not allied with each other, so they will spend most of their time fighting with one another. Victory is yours when you have defeated all of the castles and heroes. And I have three choices. Either 2000 pieces of gold, a thunder maze or gauntlets. Now I'm assuming that two other options give you either plus one to attack or plus one to defense. So I'll probably stick with the gold, since building up your town and recruit conditional units always eat up lots of it. You can never have too much gold. The enemy enemy Castle North captured in the name of Roland the True King. Let's check who our first hero is. It's Sarkin the Wizard, he has 0 1 to 2, he has Wisdom and Advanced, and Stone Skin as his only combat spell. Let's check our first city. It's called Korakstone, where it has 2 creature dwellings, and we're going to build a statue there to generate additional income. Now let's recruit some halflings, some balls, move them to our hero's army, and leave the town screen for the time being to explore the map and gather some shiny shiny gold. And while we're at it, let's grab the nearby pile of ore as well. Now let's get back to our town screen. We can't actually build anything, but we can recruit a hero. Let's go with Calendra the Wizard. Though she's inexperienced and her army is small, she will allow us to get the other pile of gold to the southeast, and generally explore the eastern side of the map. Gather some games. And that's it, we'll have to end our turn because we're out of full main points. Turn 2! Oh, I see a treasure chest, and chests mean experience. Let's venture further west. Even more west. Right more west. And we're out of movement points as we should count and deliberately avoid the treasure chest. Chests are for Sarakin. We now control the soul mill, we'll get 2 units of wood daily. Some more gold, but we can't quite reach it yet, so let's go back to the city and build... a cliff nest. And let's immediately put to use by recruiting rocks. And we'll end our turn. Day 3! Let's scout further west with Srakin. Lots of halflings. Not only do they pose a significant threat to our army, they might also join us later on. Let's switch to Calendra. Ah yes, gold. A thousand pieces of gold. Let's venture further north, and a little bit more north, and a little bit more northeast, and let's go to our city and build a foundry. We can now recruit golems. I am going to be precise, and after doing that, we'll have to end our turn. Day 4. Let's move Sarkin northwest, and we see nomads. There is 
no way of getting past them without attacking them, it seems. I do not pick a fight with sprites either, so I just switch to Kangra and move northeast. Wow, the northern regions seem to be crawling with the undead. Mummies to the north, skeletons to the east. Let's move Sarak in a little bit closer to the center and visit the wonderful city of Korakstone. We shall build the mage guild. Let's see what spells we got. Dispel magic, view minds and haste. A decent bunch. Let's end our turn and cautiously scout northwards. It appears there's pretty much nothing of interest here. So let's switch to Calendra. We'll send the west, a bit more west. We're not going to fight the peasants and we'll just order her to collect some wood. Yeah. Now let's go back to our city and build the ivory tower. Now we can recruit mages and we will do so. Now I do need a well and an orchard before the end of the week and it's already day 5 so for the next two days this is what we will be building. An orchard and a well. Now a horde of peasants is hardly a threat so we'll be attacking them shortly but first we might want to collect the treasure chests. Let's end the turn and send Kalindra south back to our city. Nah, let's send a scouting first. We still haven't explored the southeast corner of the map. Let's send Sarkin to get the chest, take the XP, level up! Um, ballistics, they're good for sieges. Let's get the second chest, more XP, another level up! Um, wisdom, I don't like mysticism for some reason. Well, actually there is a reason, but let's go to the city and finally build the orchard. I'm pretty sure the halfling population is quite pleased with my decision. Let's end the turn, and before I forget about it, let's build the well. As the final building this week. Here's the well. Okay, and now let's finally... Now nah, let's switch to Canada and go south. Um, archers, I don't want to attack them. Especially not with Calendra. Um, I don't want to go back to the city either. Not before I explode the corner. Okay, now we can attack the peasants. Let's move the balls back, even though it doesn't really matter. Ugh. One group of peasants down. Since you probably don't want to hear my count from Sesame Street impersonation, I'll shut up for the rest of the battle. Ugh. Well, that was predictably short and one-sided, wasn't it? Let's take control of the alchemist shop, we now get one unit of mercury per day, let's get another chest, more XP. Now we could fight the mummies to get the treasure chest, or fight the goblins to gain control of the old mine, but why not take the safe chest for the south? Let's end the turn, and it's week 2, the week of totals. Let's go to the city. Now we could upgrade our foundry to get better golems, but I'd rather have archmages, and to get archmages I need to upgrade the ivory tower which requires the library, so let's build the library. And it was expensive, but there's no way around it. Let's see what spell we received. Ooh, Bloodlust. Nice one. Okay, let's recruit some units, like mages. They might broke. Okay, the Witch's Heart gives a free skill, but I can't check what it is because the archers are blocking the way. Well, at least there's a nice gazebo to the east. Let's inch our way towards the chest, and I'll turn. Yay, we can finally reach the chest. A measly 500 XP. <gasps> Level of archery! Oh my! This is pretty much the best thing a wizard can wish for! Taken! Let's get back to our city for some reinforcements. And check the gazebo out. Um, leadership. You never know when she might find it useful. Okay, let's back up a little, get back to our city, and... Uh, okay, we don't have the gold to build or upgrade anything, so let's recruit some additional units, so we won't have the gold to build or upgrade anything next turn either. And let's end the turn. Great! Now, before we move Sarak into the city, let's send our beloved secondary hero Kalendra to do even more scouting. This time Northwest. Now we can go to Korak Storm. Nine more locks. Four iron golems, six magi, seven halflings. Let's rearrange them a little bit. And recruit more halflings. Dusty balls, iron golems and rocks left unrecruited. Let's recruit a rock. And that's it. Um, let's uh, ditch the golems that are just slowing the army down. I'm not sure what to do at this point. I mean, I really want to check what skill the witch's hut gives, but I'd have to kill the archers to find out. Might as well. I mean, I know the tier 2, but there's the range. Okay, let's end the turn. Stay home. Let's move Kandra back to the city. 
you've heard the iron golems by even more golems. Five to be exact and transfer them to her. Yeah, she has just one movement point, so she won't reach Saraki to trade armies. So let's just go and kill those archers regardless. Better safe than sorry, so I'm going to cast Stone Skin on the Halflings, because they're most likely to go down in this battle if anything will. On my side, of course. May just kill one stack. Rats block two of them. Halflings kill another one. And I'm pretty much safe. Yep. Yay, no casualties. Okay, I really don't want to gamble, so I'm not going to set Sarakin down. You go to the gazebo instead. Let's leave Kalindra in the city and forcibly end the turn. Okay, there's still not much we can build. Useful stuff, anyway. No halfing so good. That's a good thing. We have them all already. Three rocks. And we can't afford a single golem. Shame. Our destinations are pretty clear. Let's send Kalindra to the Witch's Hut. While well, Sarakin will visit the lovely gazebo. And so ends day 5 of week 2. Wow. The witch's hut offers mysticism. I am truly amazed. Let's send Kalinda back to the town and visit the gazebo with Sarkin. 1000 XP, level up, luck called diplomacy. I know diplomacy is nice, but I'll stick with luck. Let's check Sarkin's character screen. He's 0135, has wisdom and expert, ballistics, archery and luck and basic. Pretty nice. Let's get a free mysticism, as weird as it sounds. And we still can't upgrade the ivory tower. Pity. Oh well, let's recruit the last rock, the last golem, and then that. Uh... Okay, let's send Kalindra to fetch those forces for Saraki. Oh, we can upgrade the foundry now. My golems, they will be made of steel. Well, a single golem for the time being, but nonetheless. Okay, let's finally get this old mine under our panel. Let's get rid of the goblins. They wish to join us. Oh yeah, sure! A little cannon for the never held anyone. And if it did hurt someone, that's even better! Let's move them to the furthest, most dangerous unit slot. And that's in the turn, because it's Sunday. And that means additional reinforcements on the next day. It's the week of Blizzard! We control the old mine! To the east are lots of elves! The tier 3 shoot twice and are generally badass, so it would be insane to attack them. Let's upgrade the golems. Merge the stacks. Buy some... Nah, let's buy some halflings. 13 of them, and we have zero pieces of gold. Null. Okay, I said it would be insane to attack the high elves, so let's just do that. Because we like insane things. Of course, let's cast stone skin on the halflings, just to be on the safe side. Insanity. One mage down. Yeah, I know I should have locked lower. I know. Another mage goes down. Then again, probably no one will miss them. They just live solitarily in the rivalry towers, waiting for a hero who will need them in battle, learning spells. Out. 
Okay, show off hands. How many of you thought the goblins would actually do any damage in this battle? Yay, the Santa spell power. Now, since Rakim to get the chest guarded by the mummies, but you'll have to check part 2 to find out how that went.